Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. Uh, I'm going to show you today just a quick overview of how to use Camera Bag Cinema, which is our new um, color correcting and uh, video filtering software. Uh, I'm going to start by just pushing this button here to load some media. Um, here's the shot I'm going to be working with uh, for this video. Um, you can see it's just got what you'd expect. I can scrub through it down here. Um, press left or right just to advance by one frame. So to start out, um, <clears throat> let me just uh, open up the histogram window. I'm going to hit the, the number one key to do that. I can uh, look at my various uh, scopes and charts by hitting the keys one through five on my keyboard. Um, you can see that uh, our, our range of brightness values sort of ends off right around here. So first thing we'd want to do is maybe adjust the exposure up. Um, and so how camera bag is divided over here, uh, we have all of our adjustments. I can expand these sections for the different adjustments. And then it's got presets for uh, presets that come with uh, the app built in and presets that you make and save for yourself later. Um, so I'm going to come to adjustments and we've got exposure right here. What this does is it drops a tile down in the tray down here. Uh, that tells me that I have uh, an exposure adjustment that I can apply to this image. Then I can just uh, slide this over like this. The sliders are nice and big, so it's easy to use with a laptop and get really precise values. Uh, so maybe about there is about where I want it. Um, and then you can tell that the, the walls are, are rather warm, so we might want to cool down the color temperature. Uh, so I can come over here and uh, click on temperature and that drops a temperature adjustment down here and so um, sliding this I can slide it left to cool it right to warm it so I'll cool it down a little bit. Uh, maybe I don't want to make it totally cool. One thing I can do I can open the the uh, RGB parade right here and um, I can um, see uh, how close my RGB values are getting how close to white I'm getting on the walls behind the woman here. Um, <clears throat> but I want it a little bit warmer than that, so we'll put it about right there. And uh, I'll just close this. And so that's sort of the basic way you can see. Uh, down here it shows you all the adjustments that are applied to the video. And I can scrub through it with these adjustments applied. Um, and uh, so I always know exactly what, what I've adjusted. Um, and I click on each of these to edit them. It's completely non-destructive. Um, what I do then, I can hit spacebar and that will start rendering a preview of this. So I've hit spacebar and then it shows me down here this preview. Uh, you can set in your preferences how long by default you want the preview to be. Um, I've got it set to maybe 10 seconds or something, but this tells you how long that is till it's rendering. If you don't want to wait, just hit spacebar again and it will show you uh, as much as it has rendered out already. And it pops it up in a window that you can uh, just compare with what you've got in the interface. Uh, so you can see it's a pretty good adjustment. It's just looping the, the little preview right here. Hit spacebar again to close that. Um, <clears throat> so it's pretty good. Uh, but I want to uh, maybe try a little bit more advanced adjustments to get a little bit more control over this. So I'm going to hit this uh, X button right here to delete everything uh, that I loaded into the tray. And uh, let's come to some of the advanced tools. Uh, so for example, uh, to adjust the brightness I'm going to use this gamma curve tool. Um, so this this tool, it's uh, it's just uh, the left side represents the dark the darker pixels, the right side represents the lighter pixels, and I can adjust, increase or decrease the gamma based on existing brightness of pixels. So let me open back up my uh, histogram here, um, and so I can boost the shadows by dragging this over here, and they they do seem a little dark, and then uh, just the highlights just how I like them. Maybe we do want it to have a little bit of shadow. I'll bring this down. Something about like about like that. Uh, so that does pretty good with our brightness. Um, <clears throat> and it's all non-destructive so it's easy to just click on this and edit it later and you can see when I mouse over this curve that it, it pulls up a little uh, grid background for me to, to judge against. Uh, now to, to take care of the temperature, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the presets. Uh, coming uh, included with Camera Bag Cinema are a whole bunch of presets. We've got film emulation, different grains, 
Um, we've got a whole section of color correction setups that we've pre-made. Uh, so I'm going to come down here. There's a, this one uh, color correction setup. It's a temperature minus 2K curve. And if I just click on this preset, it will replace everything that's in my tray because uh, these presets can you know, be, have a whole bunch of adjustments. I'm going to undo that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little plus button so that it will add it to the existing stuff in my tray. And this coloring curve, this is a, a curve, again, it uh, represents darker values on the left-hand side and brighter values on the right-hand side. And so can, I can adjust the amount of, uh, of tinting. And what it's doing here is that since I'm pulling it below the middle line, I'm pulling this color in this window out of the image. So it's preset to a, a yellowish temperature so that I, uh, when I pull it down here, I'm pulling the warm out of the image. Um, so let me again open my RGB parade so that I can see uh, how close I'm getting to white. Um, looks like it wants it sort of up here for this, this area over here. And uh, let's see if there are any, there's some darker values that come into alignment when I do that. So maybe something around there. Again, I want it maybe a little bit warm, so I'll, I'll uh, just decrease this value a little bit to allow some, some, decrease the color over here to allow a little bit of warmth back into it. Uh, so let me close the histogram. Um, now I can hit the forward slash button to, to preview what it looks like before and after the effect, so I can quickly swap it on and off. And I think that's pretty good. It may be a little bit brighter than I want it. Bring this down a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. <clears throat> um, now maybe uh, let's use these presets again. Let me uh, close this color correction section. Uh, maybe now I want to add on some film grain to give it a nice filmic look. Um, so what we have here is a whole bunch of presets that we've uh, created for you that have different scales and different types of grain. Um, like I say, uh, since these are presets, if I click over here, it will just replace everything that I have with that preset, and that was a very heavy grain. But if I click the plus button, then it will layer that on top. Um, however, if I want to go through and preview what a whole bunch of different grains look like on here, I could hit plus and then undo, plus and then undo, and just see what these are like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin the adjustments that I've already made. So I click on the little pin icons, and then I've pinned this gamma curve and coloring curve. So then when I click on a, um, on a preset, it, it won't delete the things that I've already pinned. So I can click on these easily to compare different ones. Moreover, once I've clicked on a preset, I can then hit the arrow key and just basically uh, uh, scroll through all the different grain types. Let me zoom in on a portion here. This is a 1080p video, so it doesn't have all that much zoom on it. Um, I'm going to zoom in here, and then I'm just hitting the up and down, uh, I'm hitting the down arrow keys, and it's going through different grains. And some of these are sized for more like 4K video, so they'll look really large. Um, and as I go through the grains, they get larger. Uh, you can see down here, it shows you which one I'm, I'm currently loading and they're alphabetized by the size of them. So I'm going to go back up to the smaller ones. Let's find one that's fairly subtle. This one's fairly subtle. Let me edit it a little bit, turn down the amount maybe. So it's just a very subtle grain. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, zoomed out. Let me reduce the scale and the amount a little bit more so it's very, very subtle. Okay, and now I'm going to hit the space bar and again, process a preview. Um, so I can just see what that looks like in motion. And the grain in camera bag is a, is a very, uh, it's, it's a model grain. It's not a cheesy overlaid, um, just an overlaid texture. And so it actually uh, moves around and affects the pixels like real film grain would. would. So it's, uh, it's actually a, a, a pretty intensive uh, uh, algorithm to compute that. So it takes a little longer to render. Let me hit the space bar just to see what's rendered out. And uh, yeah, I think that looks quite good. Um, 
One of the other things that we can do uh, with these presets, let me just remove this grain that I applied. Um, some of the other interesting presets we've included are uh, these uh, film stock emulations. And we've got quite a few motion and still film stock emulations. And so again, with the color corrections that I applied, um, I've got them pinned. Um, so uh, now when I click on these, it will layer them on top of the color corrections that I've already done. And so this is a, um, uh, this is a tungsten balanced film. And so it's turning everything more bluish. If I come to the daylight ones, uh, then they're color corrected more uh, appropriately. But again, I'm just going to be um, pushing the down arrow and going through these and seeing if I find one I like of these emulations. I really like this, this pushed, uh, this is uh, based on a Fuji Eterna uh, 160 film. Um, I like that pushed look, even though it's kind of blue. Um, so maybe I'll come down to my coloring curve and, uh, and reduce the uh, amount that it's doing a little bit. All right, um, and so I think this is pretty good, and uh, it's, it looks very filmic, and uh, you can see everything that's applied in this filter, and it's quite a few things, uh, because I've got my initial color correction here, and then with all of these things layered on from that, that uh, film emulation. Um, one of the uh, uh, curves that I might want to mess with is this, um, this hue saturation curve. That adjusts the uh, the saturation of, of each of the colors based on the hue, um, and this is like a, a more powerful detailed version of, of uh, the tools found in a lot of other color correction software, uh, where I don't have to just click on a, a hue range and then set it for that. I can have this curve control that is very accurate, um, where I can dial in exactly the kinds of uh, saturation I want, how I want it to flow along. The, uh, the color spectrum and you can see that the curve wraps around because uh, um, the hue values wrap around. So uh, that looks pretty good. Um, <clears throat> let me just show you really quickly just a few of the other presets besides these uh, film emulation ones. We've got all these classic photography ones like cyanotype and various instant films. Um, I think are quite good emulations. Uh, we've got different uh, different matte looks. There's a whole bunch of different um, mats, and I'm just arrowing through these. Uh, let me undo to get back to uh, the color correction that I set up here. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to show uh, just really quickly is cropping, because a lot of uh, video software makes it really hard to just simply crop or rotate video. Um, and uh, so I'm hitting the crop button, which opens up this crop tool. I'm going to change the aspect ratio. I, my favorite aspect ratio is probably 2 to 1. And I'll just frame this about like that and hit enter. And then it's cropped my video for me. Um, let me just render this out one more time and uh, just get a preview of what it looks like in motion to make sure that I actually like it. Um, it should be sufficient just to get an idea of it. That looks good. All right, so now I'm going to hit S to save it out to disk, and I've got um, uh, my options are various containers for H.264 or ProRes 422 and 4444. Um, and so let's do a ProRes one for the, the highest quality. If I do it, one of these H.264 ones, you can see I can adjust the quality there. Let's do the ProRes. I'll click Save and uh, just save it to uh, this place, test video, and save it out. And I could adjust the dimensions there. You can see that this starts processing. Um, I'm using a, a uh, several years old MacBook Air to make this video on and uh, recording at the same time. So uh, you should get much better render times than this probably. Um, one thing I'll note is that if I hit the uh, Q button, then it uh, pops up the render queue window so I can queue up several things to render at the same time. And uh, then I can cancel them one at a time here. 
but those are the basics. Um, and uh, I think that you'll find that it's an extremely powerful and extremely intuitive tool. Um, and it's we're going to release it very soon. And we hope that you'll love it. Come visit us on our forums at uh, uh, neversinner.com slash camera bag. And there's a link to the forums from there. And leave us feedback. And we hope that you'll try out the beta. And uh, we hope that you'll love it as much as we do. Thanks.